All right, let me try this thing that the kiddos are always doing. Made my hand all dirty as well. All right, so I'm gonna use blue labels for my blue ash. Get it. <laughs> and uh, so I'm gonna actually do three different planting depths and I wanna keep track of the planting depths using the labels. So I'm gonna go ahead and use my little Sharpie um, and uh, keep track of the planting depth and then kind of randomize. Um, and uh, then we'll see which planting depth works best for blue ash, or at least the seeds that I have in this particular batch of blue ash. Uh, this is all blue ash. All of it was, uh, I'm calling it pot stratified. It's kind of my new thing that I'm testing. Stick seeds in a pot for the winter and see if they properly stratify. So the idea was I stuck them in in October. They warm stratified during October. And then as winter progressed, the pots got colder and colder. And ideally that would give us cold stratification during the winter. Now it's spring, and so I'm hoping that these are adequately stratified. So that's my strategy there, pot stratification. All right, so here's my first um, indication that this strategy of warm and then cold stratifying may not be ideal. Uh, this seed is all corroded, all eaten down. So lost one there, but luckily seed is cheap. So, you know, let's keep going. Most, most of the ones I've seen so far have not been super degraded like that, so. This is typical of what I've seen. It's nice and sturdy, nice and solid. Uh, it's clearly got uh, moisture in it. It looks like it's just ready to go for the season. So this first ash seed, blue ash, is being planted at half an inch depth. So I've got here blue ash, half inch, and then this is pot stratified. So these are the ones that I was stratifying in a pot in the barn over the winter. All right, I've done about 20 at a half an inch. Now I'm gonna do about 20 blue ash at three quarters of an inch. And then the next round will be uh, one inch depth, uh, one inch planting depth. So all I'm doing, I have this little uh, ruler here and I'm just getting approximately the depth I need. So that's about three quarters of an inch there. Okay, so here's the setup. I've got a uh, half inch planting depth, three quarter inch planting depth, and one inch planting depth. And so here's the thing. I'm gonna uh, run this as an experiment. Like I said, I've got three different planting depths. So I wanna know which one is best. And so what I'm gonna do then is, you don't want all of your treatments all mixed up, I'm sorry, you don't want all your treatments to all be uh, grouped together, right? Because there's different environmental factors that can influence the outcome. So here's an example where I've got a bunch of shade that's gonna be cast by the building, whereas here, these would get a lot more sun. So, yeah. so another thing that may affect it is you have edge effects where uh, we have a lot of wind that comes from the Northwest so if I had all these cloth bags out front, they're gonna dry out a lot faster than these pots, right? So I wouldn't want all these pots, these uh, bags to be in front. I'd wanna mix them all together with all the others so that they're not catching the brunt of the wind and all drying out together, because that would affect the outcome as well. So randomization in an experiment is the uh, intentional randomization of treatments so that you are kind of blending background variables together so that no background variable has an outsized influence on any one treatment. All right, and so I'm just gonna go through and randomize all these, and uh, that way any background variables that are at play here are gonna get blended in. Okay, so I checked the randomization. Looks much better now. It's uh, much more consistent. Randomized. These ends were not super random. So I've got one inch here, half an inch here, 
half an inch here, three quarter inch. In addition to the pot stratification that I keep mentioning and which you can find in my earlier video, I also did some of the classic, you know, paper towel, moist paper towel, stick it into a uh, plastic bag, you stick it into the fridge. And so this I followed just a very strict protocol of sticking it in my office, which is, you know, right around 65 to 70 degrees every day for a month. And then I stuck it into the fridge for the winter season. And I wanted to compare the two methods of pot stratification versus the traditional, uh, you know, paper towel with fridge stratification side by side just to see how the results turned out. Okay, so this is um, Oregon ash. These were a little bit drier. None of them have germinated yet. Um, we'll see. They've plumped up. So, probably fine. I want to give an update on the ash trees that I planted, started the uh, warm stratification and the cold stratification last year, and I planted them this year. Uh, I've had some success, not great success, but I've had some success. Uh, and I wanted to share uh, kind of what I've learned so far about uh, growing ash trees from seed. First thing that I want to mention is that um, based on what I've experienced so far, it seems like ash trees are very, very sensitive to the conditions uh, in which they're being potted. Uh, and so just, I wanna kinda give you a, a little bit of side by side for you, which is uh, this pot right here, this had European ash, uh, Fraxinus excelsior. And so in this pot, uh, by the time I was planting my European ash, I was running out of time. And so I didn't get to do one seed per pot. So I went ahead and I did like five or six seeds per pot for the European ash. In this pot, I got zero germination. Same batch of seeds, same warm and cold stratification process in this pot. And here I have one, two, three, four, five, six different uh, European ash trees that germinated. And so uh, I believe that uh, based on what I'm seeing, you just have to be really, really careful when you're, when you're germinating ash trees uh, to get just the right conditions. Otherwise, they're not gonna germinate. Unfortunately, I don't know what those conditions are. This pot, I got tons of germination. This pot, I got zero germination. And why is it that this one didn't work and this one did? I'm not really sure, and I apologize about that. I, I, I wish I knew. Um, this is blue ash, so I did get some germination from the blue ash as well. Um, probably about 30% germination. The blue ash I was able to put all into separate pots, and so out of, out of the pots um, that I planted, I had about 30% germination. But unfortunately, not all of them survived. So this was a blue ash seed that germinated. And what happened is it got up to the soil level and it tried to emerge from the soil. And you can physically see the seed had, had germinated and was just about to, to arise out of the soil, but it kind of got stuck in the soil. And so uh, I, I left it. I didn't pull it out and, and open up the, the cotyledons or anything. I just thought, you know, it knows how to be an ash tree better than I do. So I'm just gonna let it do its thing. And then over time, the seed, since it couldn't make it, uh, since the cuddlings couldn't spread out and, and start collecting sunlight, uh, the seedling died, unfortunately. This uh, blue ash tree actually sprouted, but then for whatever reason, um, it, it died. It was getting the same amount of water as the others, uh, same area as the others, same amount of sunlight as the others. And for whatever reason, this uh, ash tree, even though it germinated, it just didn't want to live and it died. Um, and so uh, I don't know if anyone has experience with ash trees or what, but in, in my experience, I'm basically just, I've decided that ash trees are very, very finicky and that you just really need the exact right conditions to get them to, to grow. Uh, and so if anyone has any other experience or has any other pointers that we could use, I'd love to hear about them. And so um, that's part of what I wanted to share today is kind of the diversity of experience that I had from non-germination uh, like this, where literally there's like five or six seeds in here and none of them germinated, to great germination, to partial germination, germination and then death, and then successful germination. And uh, again, all of these experience pretty much 
similar conditions in terms of how much I watered them, how much sunlight they got. Uh, I'm not sure what causes one to be successful and the other to not be successful. They were all uh, stratified with that warm stratification in the barn, followed by cold stratification during the winter. Um, quite, a, quite a few of the seeds germinated, so I don't know if that was maybe not the best way to warm and then cold stratify. Um, but, you know, since some of them did so well, it makes me think that maybe uh, it is a decent way to warm and cold stratify. Um, and that something else might have been at play. What I think may have uh, been going on here is that these, uh, these pots here, these are actually straight municipal compost. And that municipal compost can be pretty dense. It's not very light and airy, it's pretty dense. In fact, as I'm kind of tapping on this, it seems almost like I'm tapping on like clay soil. So the fact that it's so dense may have inhibited the seeds from growing like we want them to. Um, whereas this soil here is actually not municipal compost. It's a mixture of old potting soil that I was using for other things. So if if I, you know, if you kind of ask me to go out on the limb and speculate what I think the issue might have been, it's that the potting soil may have been too dense and the seedlings could have struggled to get out uh, and also the roots could have struggled to penetrate. And so that's kind of where I'm at on this is next year, I'm gonna make sure to use some nice aerated, fluffy, light potting mix and make sure that the plants can get in there and, and spread out like they need to. I also did a warm stratification and then cold stratification uh, based on kind of the plastic bag method. You can go and check out my videos, my previous videos to see what that process looked like. And so I planted them in this bed right here. Uh, pretty much none of them germinated except over here I did get some Oregon ash that germinated. So this one here, so that one here germinated but it's not doing well. So another example where it germinated and then died. This one's doing quite well. This one's doing well. This one's small but I think it's very healthy. These are some mulberries here. Big happy mulberries. And so yeah my European ash and the blue ash did not germinate when I planted them in this particular setting. Um, the reason I don't have any Oregon ash in pots is because with the Oregon ash, the pot stratification that I was using uh, actually got some worms in it, and I think the worms ate all the seeds because I went back and dug through the Oregon ash bucket, and none of them, like, there, there were no seeds left, but there were some big, fat night crawlers that had gotten into that bucket. I think they may have gone and eaten all the seeds. <laughs> and so the Oregon ash, the only ones that actually made it are the ones that were stratified in a baggie, warm stratified in a baggie, and then placed into the fridge over the winter. And so I do at least have some Oregon ash that are growing, um, but the pot stratification, I'm not sure if that's gonna work for them. I wanted to follow up. Uh, I forgot to mention in the video that, you know, I was running this experiment, I was doing three different depths, uh, half inch, three quarter inch, and one inch depths, and I forgot to say which had the highest success rate in terms of how many seeds germinated. Uh, the blue ash was the only one that I potted individual plants in individual pots. And so among those pots I had about 30% germination, and then among that 30% germination, about half and half were the half inch depth and the three quarter inch depth and I didn't have any germinate at the one inch depth. So if you're looking to pot your own ash trees from seed, uh, I wouldn't plant any deeper than three quarters of an inch because I had zero success. Uh, you know, maybe you'll have different luck, um, but with me, the one inch uh, planting depth didn't give me a single germination. And so I would go a little bit shallower on the ash trees. So thanks so much for watching and hope, hope, it, hope it was useful. And I always look forward to hearing any comments that you guys have on um, things that you've tried, what I can do differently, um, any ideas you have. And so look forward to hearing from you guys and uh, take care. We'll see you next time.